All right, we are broadcasting on the worldwide interwebs uh, through kdge.com, live from EdgeFest 23. It's Jeff K. with The Neighborhood. Welcome, boys. We out here. Hello. How's it going? Hey, you want to introduce yourselves to everybody watching? I'm Brian. I'm Jeremy. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And I'm Jeff. Do you want us to change from color to black and white for the interview? Please. Do that, that. that right now. Don't and do can it Can we just before. switch it real quick? Boom, yeah. black. You know where I'm going with that, right? I'm sure you guys get asked a lot about the, the <laughs> black and white thing. What's the deal with the all black and the website is black and white? It's just our vision, man. It's just what we like. Yeah. It's how we want to be perceived. Yeah? Why is that? Uh, we, feel, we feel like it fits uh, the vibe of our music. Like, very melancholy. Very, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we just feel like black and white. It's just our vibe. It's what yeah, we like, it. yeah. Sets the right. mood going into it. It's uh, It's been an amazing 2013 for you guys. I mean, uh, Female Robbery, Sweater Weather, songs are blowing up. Yeah. You guys are picked as kind of a buzz band. You know, did you guys kind of foresee this type of success when the EP came out? I mean, you hope for it. You know what I mean? You don't want to count your chickens before they hatch, but you, you really, you know, you want to, you aim for it. But, I mean, nobody really thinks it's, it's going to come that easily. Right. My bad. That's all right. Uh, cool. You're getting texts. People are watching. They're blowing uh, up your phone. I know. <laughs> So tell us how things kind of happened in the LAC and kind of how it, it broke out for the neighborhood. Um, well, we put out Female Robbery on the internet and uh, people started to really dig it. And we then put out Sweater Weather and uh, people dug that one even more. Um, and then we put out the EP and it, it kind of just gradually grew and people seemed to latch on to what we were doing. Uh, and we like started developing a pretty strong like fan base early on. Um, not even like so much an abundance of people, but the people that were listening and paying attention were like really true to us, and which is really cool. And we still see that today. Like, well, you know, the same people tweet us at the, you know, when we had a hundred followers and all right. that. So like, uh, people just kind of caught on and wanted to be part of the movement, and that's what uh, what's exciting for us. Like, you know, we, we the whole like black and white thing, like talking about that. Like, we don't do it because we want to force people to see something in black and white. We want people to be part of this black and white movement with us, and like, you know, join in with us and be right. part of it because uh, it's something we really believe in. So. When other people join in with us, it's like it's nice, you know, it feels good. I noticed too that that first EP, you kind of let it go for free, and there's still resistance in the industry to d just give away your music for free. You know, How, uh, we should get paid for our music. Where, where do you guys stand on that? It's, it's important for everybody to have it, and for it to be available to everybody. You know what I mean? I, I mean, when it, when a band starts out, you really want to get your music to as many people as possible, and that seems like you know the easiest way, at least off the bat. Yeah. yeah. And we'll put out more free music also. That's cool. We're backstage at EdgeFest 23 with the neighborhood. So how's the tour been going? I mean, you've been doing